My name is Michelle, and when I was 37 years old, I was told by my surgeon that I was a ticking time bomb. I was devastated and scared and had this major life decision to make. Um, I knew I had a formidable family cancer history, having lost my mom to cancer when she was only 44 years old. And so here I was, a mom of two beautiful little kids and a wife and a teacher, and I now had to make this decision. So I decided on a bilateral mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction. Two years post-surgery, I still have continued shoulder problems and arm swelling due to the surgery. And that has caused limitations in both my professional career as a teacher and also my role as a mom. Well, I'm Sue Kim. I'm an associate professor at the University of Saskatchewan School of Rehab and Science. Michelle's story is all too common. One in eight Canadian women um, will face a breast cancer diagnosis within their lifetime. Fortunately, the survival rates are improving and 87% of women will survive and live at least five years after their initial diagnosis. But unfortunately, one of the major concerns and problems that women face after breast cancer treatments, and these are things like the mastectomies and breast reconstruction, are shoulder problems. And a uh, recent study that we did found that um, eight, eight, as many as 80% of women um, are reporting having shoulder problems after their breast reconstruction or mastectomy procedures, and that's within Saskatchewan. And these are problems such as shoulder pain, limited range of motion, um, weakness, numbness, and swelling. Part of the struggle is doing those everyday things like holding like lifting up my kids into a hug or grabbing groceries in and out of the car, just those everyday things that people don't think about. I have to think, is this hurting? How should I move? How do I make this better? Is this my new normal? Is this how I'm expected to live for the rest of my life? I'm Dr. Annika Card. I'm one of the plastic reconstruction surgeons in Saskatoon and I've been here for approximately seven years and I have a huge patient base of patients who have breast reconstruction. You have breast reconstruction after you have breast cancer. So the two go hand in hand. You can't have just breast cancer. It's not just one surgery, it's two surgeries. And the more we do, the more we affect you. So I got involved in this project because I do a lot of surgeries which I don't know what's actually going to happen to my patient at the end of it. And that's specifically related to the shoulders and the upper chest. The breasts are part of that. So when I move your breast and I remove part of your chest wall, what's going to happen to your shoulder? We don't know. Women patients, um, surgeons and physical therapy, physical therapists alike are frustrated. Um, we currently don't have a sophisticated understanding of how the different breast reconstruction techniques are changing the way the muscles and the bones in the shoulder region are, are moving. And so this is really an opportune time for us to do a study like this where we would be looking at three of the most common breast reconstruction techniques done here in Saskatoon and to find ways to improve post-operative care and uh, improve shoulder function afterwards. My goal is to make patients look good, feel natural in clothes, and not to get any long-term complications. Long-term complications are problems with their body. That's scarring, that's tightness, that's function of muscles and joints, and that's where this study comes in really important because I have a really good experience and a lot of knowledge about how to make you actually look and feel normal in clothes, but I have no information about how not to affect how your shoulder works. And what's unique to our study is that we are looking at women doing shoulder tasks that are very common in the workplace. So we would be looking at women doing overhead lifting and carrying. So kind of like Michelle when she's got trouble writing on the blackboard or lifting books and carrying them from classroom to classroom or uh, lifting and carrying her kids. Those are activities that we'll be looking at with these sort of motion capture sensors on down in our laboratory. And it hasn't been done 
for those types of tasks with these breast reconstruction techniques. So we would really be the leaders in this field. So this is not only going to help women that get their treatments here in Saskatoon and the Royal University Hospital, right? Breast cancer affects everyone in every country and every nation. And the trend is that more and more mastectomies are getting done and more and more women, particularly younger women, are choosing to have breast reconstruction. So this has potential to help inform anyone really across the globe who's deciding on whether they want to have a reconstruction technique to have that information to make more informed decisions and improve their rehab. I really think our mothers, our sisters, our colleagues and friends deserve our best. And so with this study, we would be the first to be able to really streamline post-surgical breast reconstruction care. We would be able to provide evidence to guide surgical decisions and we would be able to be more proactive rather than reactive to a lot of these problems.